Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I wanted to say a big thank you to Casey, who is the reading knitter on Instagram and Ravelry. She left an iTunes review, and that was very sweet of her. I've gotten to know her better from uh, lots of Instagram pictures and chatting back and forth on there and a little bit on Ravelry. So I was really excited and happy to get on to iTunes this week and see a review for her. So thank you so review for me from her. <laughs> thank you so much, Casey. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week since we last talked. I had a really good one. In the group on Ravelry, we recently had a swap, and there are just a few of us that did it. And I was just going to talk a little bit about it, not a ton, because I know that there are tons of people that watch that didn't participate in the swap. So I just wanted to show you guys a couple things that I got. My It was a local things swap. So the you sent some things that were local to you off to somebody else so they could enjoy stuff from different regions. My person who sent, and it was a surprise, my person who sent me stuff was Malin B, and I got a lovely package from her with lots of goodies, and since she knew my birthday was coming up in March, she sent me some extra stuff, and she has, she sent me extra stuff from her Etsy store. So I just wanted to show you guys that. The first skein my daughter may have gotten a hold of before I got to get it away from her, so it's a little, it did not come like this. It came much nicer. But this is the first one that she sent me. You can see my daughter hugged it. And this is her 100% Superwash Merino. And it's in the colorway seaweed. It's very, very pretty. And then these other two are how they actually came. And these, the colors she picked are so amazingly me. She did a great job finding colors that I just love. This one, see? This is how it came, very nice. This one is the same base and it is a hundred weight, it's 130 yards, so it's a little bit less of a skein. It's 50 grams. And this is in the purple blue natural colorway. And this is a it says fingering weight. So the other is a DK. And it has purples and blues and grays and it's gorgeous and I really like it. And I wanted to show you guys her Etsy shop is right there. So you should definitely go check it out. Her yarn is very squishy and nice, and I think that you would like it. I know that I'm really excited to knit with this. And then the last one of these that she sent me was also 130 fingering weight, and this is gray, purple, blue. So it's kind of the sibling to the other one, and it's, it's like that. It's a very pretty purple with grays and pops of blue. So I think those would be beautiful knit up together maybe as a color work cowl or something. I'm really excited. So thank you so much, Mal and B. And it's exciting to see what everybody's getting in their swap packages. I also am drinking the tea that she sent me in my swap package, which is Mandarin Orange Spice. And it's really, really good. And I also wanted to talk really briefly about a couple of the knit-alongs. I haven't mentioned these in forever that we have currently going on in the Ravelry group. We have a sweater knit-along, and that runs to the end of March, and it can be any sweater that you started whenever, two years ago, three months ago, five months ago, just as long as you finish before the end of March. The prize for that is going to be something awesome that I'm going to pick up for you guys at DW Fiberfest. Probably a bag with some yarn in it and maybe some stitch markers depending on if I can find some good deals and how far I can stretch my budget for that. So I'm really excited to go pick something up. So enter for that at the Ravelry group if you would like. There's a thread for it to enter your finished um, sweater. And another thing that we have going on this year is our 15 oldest skeins. So the idea for that is just knit up old, your older stash that you have in there and you still love and need to knit with because you haven't yet. And then you can enter that and every month at the end of the month, I will draw for a person from that thread to win a pattern of their choosing for $7 or less. And that's all happening in the group Bookish Stitcher All One Word Podcast. So let me tell you guys my finished objects. You can probably already see them because I'm wearing them. This is my Ease sweater. Oh, I love it. This is the Ease by Alicia Plummer, and it's knit out of Malabrigo Rios in the Lavanda colorway. It's so pretty. It's grays and purples. It's not extremely variegated, but it's very subtly. And see how long it is? I can completely 
hide my hands in it and it's very long on the bottom too. And I don't know if you can tell, it's the collar, I did the collar with the drawstring. And the weather here has been freezing, ice, too warm, to, so it's going back and forth. It's being very sporadic at the moment. And today is a colder day, so I decided to wear this and show you guys. And the other thing I'm wearing, ah, I, I'm in love with this. As soon as what you guys saw last week, as soon as I had spun this up, I, I just couldn't wait to knit with it. It was like a siren song calling to me. So I had to knit. This is my Moon Rover hand spun that I finished up last week and then promptly, as, fin as soon as I finished this sweater, knit a hat out of it. Oh, it's so squishy, you guys. So let me tell you what hat this is. I believe it's called the Gwyn. I might be mispronouncing that hat, but it's by Wooly Wormhead. And it's actually from the um, Baby Bambino's book. So it's supposed to be a book uh, it is a book of patterns for kids, but the hat that they have you knit for the kids is done on size six needles. So I thought, why not knit it on size ten and a half, and it will fit me, and it does, and I love it so much. And it's 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 like the happiest hat. I'm convinced that if someone is having a bad day, and you gave this hat to them and they wore it, that their day would suddenly be a little bit brighter. It I don't know. I was having kind of a sad day earlier and I put this hat on to podcast and now I'm smiling so I think it works. But the colors are so pretty. It's red and then this bronze and brown and blue and then blue and then black and then black and white and it completely points at the top. <laughs> I was hoping to use up all of the hand spun but I still have a substantial, well, a smallish, but it's all the white except for that tiny little bit left. But I'm glad that I started with the colors because I got to use all the colors. The only part that's left is the white and that will be great for tying up packages and stuff that I send off to friends. So those are all my finished objects. I have a few works in progress this week. I tend to, at the beginning of the month, kind of get really excited about the new month and all the new possibilities and cast on a lot. So let me show you my oldest one. It's actually in a new bag. I apparently have a thing for hot air balloons. I, my awesome granny bag has hot air balloons on it, and this has hot air balloons. And this is just a little sock bag, and it's going to be great for DFW when I go around to fiber festivals this year, just to keep this on my wrist. And she kept posting these on Etsy, so I finally had to go and buy one. And it's the bag is I sew for you on Etsy. And these are my retro ribbed socks out of some yarn pirate. I have one sock done. I already showed you the guys this one last week. And I just barely started the cuff last week, and this week I have the cuff done and I'm doing the heel flap. And they're striping quite nicely. I'm excited about that, even though they're not supposed to stripe, but that's the yarn. These should be done this week because my I have a pretty small foot. It's a size seven, seven and a half, depending on the shoe. So the cuff was longer than the, sh the actual sock part, so it should go pretty fast. Next thing that you guys have already seen is in my homespun house bag. And this is my Buttercup by Heidi Kiermaier, and it's out of some January yarns. And this I actually got to knit on for a while on Thursday night. I had It was a great week for knitting with friends. Wednesday I went out with some friends to a Starbucks and we sat and knit for a while before the winter weather warning came in and we all went home before the ice got on the roads. And then Thursday night, Miss Trish Knits and I had a Skype session and I knit on this while we did our Skype. And it's really, really pretty. Last week I just barely cast on and now I've done a few more inches. I've joined the part together so I can do the lace panel in the front and that was just wonderful getting to talk to her and we skyped for a little over an hour and if any of you guys would ever like to do a VKN or anything like that with just a small group because it's easier if there aren't a ton of people I would definitely be up for that and love to get to know you guys better it was great getting to know her better and see all her gorgeous yarn she has some really pretty yarn that she was working on and then I have two new things so let me start with this one first. 
I realized that I wanted to use some of my yarn to knit presents for other people just because I didn't have, I like to always have stuff on the needle for somebody else other than me. That's just kind of how I roll. And I didn't have anything on the needles for somebody else, except for the socks for my mom, but those have been living in the car for when I go on car rides. I didn't bring those in to show you guys. So I cast this on, and this was out of the Knitting in the Mitten Retreat goodie bag yarn. I think it's North Cabin, Northwoods Cabins yarn. And um, it goes, it's a gradient. It goes from black, well it started with the white, and then it went to gray, and then it went to the black. And I have a little sheep stitch marker from Wee Ones. And the pattern for this is Gradient Cal, and it's by Sally Palin, I believe. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's actually living in my absolute wonder St. Patrick's Day bag, and I really, really like that bag. It's my birthday bag. And the last thing I have to show you guys is another birthday thing, but this is not for me. It's for my little pickle, my daughter. She is turning three next Wednesday, and I, I can't believe it. I, you know, as I say, I feel like I just brought her home from the hospital, and now she's three and running around like crazy and climbing up. She's so adventuresome. And so Friday evening, I decided that she needed a new stuffy for her birthday because she loves my knitting so much. So I promptly cast on, and this is in my Halsey yarn bag. Right there. And she's on Etsy, and she has adorable cute bags that are perfect for socks or hats or, or toys. So I promptly cast on for my daughter a Susan Claudino pattern, and it's Rolly, who is the giraffe. And so the little arms done and then I got the legs done and isn't that cute I think that's so adorable the little feet and there's the start of the sweater so I'm really excited I'm making the sweater striped because I didn't know if I would have enough yarn because I'm using up scraps I think you can kind of tell it's actually this is a yellow that is from my split back snowflake hat, it's January yarns. The darker purple is actually leftovers from this sweater. And the lighter purple in the stripe is actually leftovers from the cloak I knit for my daughter out of Barocco. And it's going to be a really adorable giraffe, so I'm really excited about that. And that's mostly what I'm going to be working on until it gets done, since her birthday is Wednesday. So that's all my works in progress. I had to restrain myself from casting on more because like I said at the beginning of the month I just I'm one of those people every new month is filled with possibilities and I get really excited. So let's do spinning next. I started on March 1st some Corydale on my wheel. I actually am participating in the Instagram the spin 15 and 15 and so she had this thing where you pick out what you're going what you hope to spin in March and so I have three braids for my wheel and then two drop spindles I want to work on and the first braid for my wheel is actually with the U University year of the sheep and everybody was saying on Instagram that this looks like Easter colors and it does it kind of reminds me of peeps there's yellow a very bright pink and then a lighter pink and then a blue underneath so this is my first time spinning with Corydale. It's not that bright, yeah. And it's it's pretty grabby, considering I just spun the Moon Rover, which slid out of my hands with wonderfulness. But I don't know if that is standard for this breed, if Corydale just in and of itself is more grabby, or if this spray that I got is more grabby. So I look forward to spinning with this breed again and kind of just exploring it. I think this will be Maybe, I thought of maybe a stuffy for my daughter, maybe a little bunny for Easter, but it's not soft. It might be soft after being soaked, but I don't know if that would be a good idea. Or it might be some um, hats or mittens with lining because, it, like I said, it isn't really soft. But I finished half the braid. Now what I did with this, cause kind of what I did with this, is that I split the braid down the middle, broke it up by colors, but what I believe I'm going to do this time 
is this one I ended with the blue, the next one I'm going to start with the blue so that I don't try to match the colors up at all because I don't, it didn't work very well on this one, but this turned out beautifully. So I, I'm in love with it and it's so smushy. This oh, it's so smushy. So that was my spinning this week. Now for enabling, there since it is my birthday month, enabling's just going to be heavier this month than normal, other than Christmas time, because my mom or my family um, give me money for my birthday. That's just kind of what they've done since I've been an adult. And what do you do when you're a knitter who gets money for your birthday? You go to Etsy. <laughs> At least I went to Etsy. And also, my husband will have some stuff that he'll get me, and so I'll be showing that off next time. And there would be more enabling. I actually, my mom gave me the money, and I promptly went to Etsy and spent all my birthday money. But one of the packages, the bigger one actually, is a kit, and it hasn't arrived. The mailman said it was supposed to arrive Friday, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'm just telling myself it will arrive, and it's not lost, because that would make me really sad. So the one thing that I got for my birthday, there's two things with, that I got from my birthday present from my family, but this is the only one that came in the mail. And it's a spindle by Erin Makes Stuff. And it has colored pencils. And I've seen these around everywhere, and I just thought they were really pretty. And this. It was kind of funny about this because I got on Etsy to check on the status of the other thing I ordered that hadn't came yet, and I caught this update, and these are one of those things I think that you have to have ninja skills to obtain, and I, they just happened to be updating as I was checking, so I kind of felt like it was destiny and I had to get one. And my husband did say, you got another spindle? <laughs> it's funny because he doesn't mind about the yarn, but the spindles, he's like, don't get any more. So this is my last spindle, except I would like a nice wooden Turkish because I don't have one of those. But it's pretty. It's sparkly blues. And I, blue, green, and purples are some of my favorite colors. And then the other enabling I have is a club that came. And I am in the Spartacus Dyes Club for the Gilmore Girls. And it's kind of funny because I have not actually watched much of the Gilmore Girls. I didn't watch it when it originally came out, but I have been sporadically watching it now, and I enjoy it. It's really funny, and I like it. I, I'm not one of those people that binge watches shows, except a very, very few, and I, I like it when I find a show that I want to binge watch, but it's just not normal for me. But I do enjoy the show, and so when I found out she was doing a club and everybody on Instagram had showed off their beautiful yarns, I just decided to join in. And I actually used, we have the D-Stash thread in our Ravelry group, I actually used most of the money from my bags that I D-Stashed to join for the club. And my February club came, and the colorway is Sugar Coma. And Spartacus Dyes .com. And it's really cool what she does with this club is that you get to pick the base of yarn, and I picked the worsted because... I have so much fingering and I thought this would be really cute for my daughter for a little hat and mitten set. And then she lets, she gives you two quotes from the Gilmore Girls show and you pick one and then she kind of uses that as an inspiration for the colorway. This one, as you might be able to guess, was a quote about you can't watch Willy Wonka without having, was it copious amounts, tons of candy, something like that. And it's perfect. It's wonderful very applicable to the quote and it's funny because I just today chose my quotes for the month of March and I haven't finished season one of the Gilmore Girls and the yarn club has now gotten ahead of me because there was a quote from season two and I had no idea what the reference to the quote was so I picked the season one one that I kind of knew so I need to go back and watch some more of those I kind of think it would be fun to knit a pattern with my Gilmore Girls yarn while watching the Gilmore Girls show. Yes, I am that person. So that's all the enabling. It's all everything else except for the book this week. I did want to say 
that we are going to be starting the night circus in the group, so grab your copy. A lot of people have already obtained theirs and are already starting, and some people haven't gotten it yet. So I was trying to think, because this is my first read-along and I really, you know, I'm new to it. I'm not, I'm learning how things work best way as I go. So what I was thinking is the read-along will still officially start on the 15th, but let's just say for the people that already have the book and really want to discuss it, that you can start chatting about it on the 10th. That way, if people haven't gotten the book yet, they can know to kind of stay out of the thread till they have gotten a little bit caught up. And then people can chat about it if they already have the book and have already started reading. But you're not, at, you won't be officially behind or anything like that. But definitely come over to the Ravelry group and chat about the book with us. I have mine already because it's a reread for me, so I'm excited to get doing that and so many people that have already started are talking about how much they love it and that makes me really excited because I never know when I review a book even if I love it everybody is so different and that's awesome I love that everybody's so different because it makes it interesting but I never know if I'm gonna review a book and people are gonna read it and think I hated this so I'm glad that people so far are really loving it and I can't wait to discuss it more with you guys so the book for this week is one that I kind of just recently finished a couple weeks ago. It is Aaron's Rod by D.H. Lawrence. And this book have got given to me quite a while ago. A giant book that says 1001 books to read before you die. And I was kind of going systematically through and I checked off the ones that I had already read. I'm a little bit of a nerd in this way. And then I started at the A's, and that was one of the first ones that I hadn't read. And so I went to the Gutenberg. It's an online free reading of any books that are older, and it was on there. And so I just read it online at night and stuff because it's free. You can just read it really quickly, and if you're, you can turn down the brightness of your computer if that bothers you. And this book, let me tell you, it was a very interesting read for me. I've never read any D.H. Lawrence. And while I was reading it, I was convinced that something must have happened to Mr. Lawrence to make him very embittered towards love and marriage and women. <laughs> so it, it, it was an interesting book. I'll kind of give you a brief synopsis of it. Aaron is a man who has come back from the war and he he was working in the mines and stuff like that and he plays a flute. Sweet Aaron's rod. And he has a wife and kids. He decides to leave them so he can go be free because his wife is tying him down and it's they're in this embittered battle of wills of who can win and who will be the submissive one and and women are always trying to bring you down or bring you under their thumb. <laughs> so that's kind of what made me think, hmm, this, this guy has some issues. And so Aaron leaves his family, his wife, all alone to raise the kids. He does send them back money, so there's at least something there. But he goes and he plays in an opera, and he kind of meets different people. And he does have relations with a couple you know, he has a couple affairs, I think, but he and most of the time doesn't want to, and he's kind of seduced by the women, and then afterwards he's always disillusioned by it and just hates the woman afterwards. So that's pretty pretty interesting book. And it had a lot of philosophy, I feel, in it. He a lot of D.H. Lawrence kind of putting off his world views into the book. I really feel like it was one of those books, you know, where the author has certain ideas about things and they just decide to use their book as a vessel for getting their ideas out there. And so Aaron travels around the world and kind of, he's just kind of a freeloader. He lives off of rich people's money. He'll go stay with them and when he's in the opera, he is working and making money, but then he just goes to Italy and stays at some rich people's place, and they kind of feed him, and then he just travels around, and there's another man that he kind of 
forms a bond friendship with and they do a lot of talking about their life views and things like that and I won't give away what happens in the end to Aaron's rod but I guess for Aaron it's tragic but I I don't know if I would recommend this book I I like to I can now say that I've read a D.H. Lawrence and I know that he has other this is one of his lesser known works so I might try to read one of the ones that he's more known for and see if I can if I like any of those but this wasn't a particularly enthralling read. It, it was very interesting at different points when he was spewing off about how much what's wrong with women in love. So I don't know. I need to go research more his life because there was something going on there. But that's the book for this week. I was going to do a different book and I had everything planned out and I had the title fit in it with it and everything but then my yarn stuff didn't come so I'm gonna have to wait and review that book next week so that I, the title will be applicable but this is this week's book. Aaron's Rod by D.H. Lawrence and it is apparently in the or it is in the 1001 books you must read before you die so I can now say that I am one one more book done on that checklist and I yeah I'm I wasn't in love with it but you you know you might be your favorite book <laughs> but if you've read any D.H. Lawrence and you have one of his that you really love Definitely tell me about it because, you know, this is one of his lesser known works and that might be for, it's probably for a reason, you know. So if you've read any others and you have any recommendations of any classic D.H. Lawrence that you think is really well written, I would love to hear it. So that's everything for this week, you guys. I can't wait to talk to you next week and show you all the enabling. Get ready for lots of enabling next week because... Hopefully, fingers crossed, that package is just slowly making its way here and it will be here and I can show it to you guys and I'm going to try to get my husband to let me open my Yarny presents early so I can show them on the podcast before my birthday so that they won't get lost in the bundle of DFW Fiber Festival purchases. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I hope that spring is starting to come sometime. I know here it's cold, but I hope that you guys have a wonderful week and that you get to do all the things that you love. Okay, bye guys.